Kevin, the whole company just jumped out of the rear cage. One, two, three, four, five, six. We jumped in the rear. We need massive EMS here. Massive injury. That's why I've already notified you. The call came in at about 7.58 a.m. in the morning. We knew it was a four-story building. You know, we start getting the size up as, 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 we, uh, as we came into the, the job, you know, on the radio, additional information is coming in. And uh, we, had it, we were facing a nor'easter that morning. Uh, we had winds blowing in excess of uh, 35 miles an hour, and we had about a foot of snow on the ground. Initially, when we got up to, to the top floor, it was a moderate smoke condition, and it remained that way for the, for the majority of the time. Basically, we're up there searching for life and fire, and, uh, and you know, again, a moderate smoke condition, and there's no fire. We're not finding any fire. Um, they lost water on the floor below, so the secondary line that was stretched to the floor above needed to be back down off the top floor, which is, it, it happens. It happens in fires, and you know, you adapt and overcome in fires, and they backed the, the line off the top floor and brought it down to the fire floor to help alleviate the situation down there. We eventually made our way into the, the apartment directly over the fire apartment to help assist 27 truck. Um, in the kitchen area, I located um, a heat source with the thermal imaging camera. I, I took my halogen, popped a small hole in a wall, and fire immediately started to vent out of the wall. Immediately, my captain uh, radioed for, uh, gave an urgent message and, and uh, you know, asked for a line to be brought to the top floor. We have fire venting out, you know, the, out of this hall and into the kitchen and into the hallway. Four two to division seven. Go ahead, four two. Chief, we have some hey, 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 hey. Oh, have fire into the hallway on the floor above. You need a line upstairs. No water. Conditions are starting to change as, as we talk. And very, very quickly, I step into the hallway. It's dark. And I pan my camera down the hallway, and I pick up silhouettes of a truck company, which is 27 truck. The area that we came in from is behind us, you know, our entrance to the apartment. So I know I got to go get these guys and tell them they need to come back. I walk down the hallway maybe five feet. I have a face-to-face -face with the firefighter that we later know as that's Firefighter Qualley of 27 Truck. And uh, I said, brother, we need, to, uh, we need to fall back. We got fire behind us. We need, you know, need to go to the stairwell and, and wait for a line. He goes, we're trapped. I said, we're not trapped. I turn around and fire floor to ceiling. I should have been, go been able to go through some pocket doors right to a fire escape, but that wasn't the case. Mayday, mayday, mayday! Light a two seven, mayday! You're not with You gotta get a hole in the roof before the shield blows down on everybody. Division seven to the um, mayday message. Good. Who's the mayday? The member from 27 truck, he's out of here. The mask has been lowered to him and he's a member with him. But we need to get a hole in the roof. Somebody illegally subdivided this building to make more apartments where it should have been one apartment that we went in. There was multiple illegal apartments and illegal walls that hid these egress areas that should be there for us, you know, and for civilians. Before you know it, we're pushed up and out onto to windows. Hey, Battalion 1 to 7, all units on the roof. Back out to the stairway, back out to the stairway. It's out the windows on the top floor. 1 7, inch 4 8, how do you make out your line? Brothers on the roof, you're going to need to send the roof over the side. Roof team, send the scoop over the side to the two, four side of the building. Okay, 6-7 to the division. Rescue, hook to rescue, Mayday! Go ahead, boys. Go ahead, Mayday. What's your location? Rescue, rescue, hook. We're going to get to the roof. We're going to bail out of here. Hurry up! We need radio silence. I need water in that two and a half inch line. 48 needs water to the two and a half inch line. Mayday, get the rope to the roof. Rope to the roof. Get a 35 in the rear. It came to a point that we had to go, and uh, you know, I mean, thank God I did have a rope. Thank God I had Joey DiBernardo at the, at the window to my left to help me. You know, you know, uh, three firefighters to the left of me egressed the building, not in uh, 
not in any uh, easy way. I mean, they jumped out of the building. And I know that they jumped. I can't see it in my mind anymore, but I, I knew I was the last one in a room. And it happened very quickly. It was one after another, and I, I knew they were gone. And I was sitting there, and fire's blowing out over my head. And, um, you know, I said to Joey, I mean, we're having a conversation. Not like, you know, we're having a cup of coffee or anything, but we're having a quick conversation. I go, Joe, I have a rope, but I have nowhere to tie it off to. And Joe, you know, uh, Joey said, throw it to me. I go, no, no, no. I said, you go, and I'll. somehow I was going to lower him. I don't know how I was going to do it, but I was going to get him out first. And uh, he says, throw it to me. You have a wife and kids, and, uh, and I'll get you down first. So I threw him one end of the rope, and he wrapped it around his arm, and then he stood on the rope. And I took the, the other end of the rope, and I, you know, what I had left, and I wrapped it around my body in what we call a body belay, and I grabbed onto the rope with both my hands. And I, and I rolled out the window. I, I fell literally a, an inch from the top of the step, falling another 10 feet where the rest of the firefighters fell, where firefighter uh, Cawley and Stolowski and Myron and Ballou and firefighter DiBernardo ended up falling. So I fell 10 feet less somehow. And, you know, I mean, I was in, I was in a world of hurt. I mean, I broke everything in my body. Everything that you can think I broke, I broke. Four New York City firefighters did survive a remarkable leap of faith on January 23rd, but two fire lieutenants did not. Eugene Stolowski, Joseph DiBernardo, and Jeffrey Cool have been on a roller coaster of medical ups and downs since the fire, fighting life-threatening infections and respiratory collapse. DiBernardo says he wouldn't mind fighting fires again, but Cool doesn't think it's in the cards for him. The ordeal has taught him to let go of anger in his life. All I want to do is one step at a time and get up and walk with my kids and enjoy life. Somebody, you know, I mean, the firefighters that were back there and EMS, they did an exceptional job, you know, taking care of us, you know, and, uh, and they saved four of our lives. And, you know, unfortunately, we lost two of our brothers that day. Every day that we come to work, whether it be the chief of the department to the youngest probie, we need to train and hone our skills and stuff that we already know and learn new skills to help alleviate situations that you might find yourself in like I did that day. Again, you know, the, the training for success, you know, um, we do need to train for things when they go wrong because they do go wrong at fires and uh, we need to be smart and uh, cognizant of the fact that these things can and will happen and we are interior firefighters. We fight the fire from the inside. We go in to save life and property, and we need to, to have the best equipment available, and we need to learn from mistakes. When you find yourself in a situation, we need to control ourselves as best as we can and find something deep within us to say, hey, you know what? Tommy over there is calling a mayday. Jeff over here has to slow down and, and allow this mayday to take you know, to get acknowledged and try to see where it is. And I trained every which way to go out a window. And ultimately, where did I end up? I ended up on the ground, you know, some, some 40 foot below, busted up in a fight for my life. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to any firefighter, you know, I mean, anywhere in, in the country. And, and, and we need to, to be better at our jobs. The man that I once was, you know, our lives have changed. And I mean, uh, I, I live with this every day, the pain. I'm in a doctor's office three days a week dealing in physically and mentally with where I am. My life has changed, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I, I would give anything, get one more time, get up on the rig.